All right, on the right side of Belshire Beach, we have our yellow Protoss player from the team, Startail. Is he going to get tricky this game? Try to win the game with some tricks? Because he's... Startail tricks talk. We have to find out. Played Brood War for a long time. And uh, over on the left side of the map, we have our blue Terran player from the team, MVP. MVP Dream. He dreams of the round of 16, but will Trickster end up being his nightmare? <laughs> Thanks for laughing. I appreciate that. I like that. This is a good oh, thing. <laughs> I was like, my joke earlier was like, Dream is the tester of Trickster. Well, that was he used clever. To be known that was clever. tester. That was good. It was okay. We all, all right. have our corny jokes sometimes. Yeah, of course. I'm actually the king of corny jokes. The king of corny jokes? You could be my minstrel. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> minstrel funny jokes. How could I, how could I ever uh, live this down? You like make the good jokes so I'm just like making the bad ones. <laughs> At like, least I can play a musical instrument because I'm the minstrel of silly jokes. <laughs> What instrument should I play? I cowbell? Know. You can play the cowbell, you can play the All triangle. Right. Now, Dream's done it again, blocking with his early second depot to make sure the Trickster can't scout that he's doing a one rack expand. And uh, Trickster actually not scouting. Nope. Until just now. Uh, so that depot, a little bit preemptive, but it's normal to make that depot. Trickster's yep. actually made his second pylon uh, at his natural. Now, that may indicate he wants to make a wolf gate. But I don't yeah. think so. Or a Maka Gate. It's not what it's called. Maka okay. didn't make gateways. Maka didn't even know that that was called the Maka Rax. Yeah, I heard about that. That yeah. was pretty funny. When I asked found him. Out. He, he thought that just like the two barracks Marine Marauder opening was the Maka build. He's like, that's the Maka build. I'm like, no, Maka. You're wrong. We decide what the Maka build is. Well, now Koreans, of course, don't watch the foreign stream, which really dictates a lot of the time what, yeah. uh, what foreigners have for names and things. Yep. It's interesting though that there was actually a different Terran opening that people were calling the Makarax on the Korean side. Well, you know what's interesting here is I think Trickster might foregate again. Hmm. He's got that pylon in a place where he can hide gateways over there if he wants to. He knows that Dream's on the same opening both games and he's doing it again. And yeah. you know, it's almost as if Trickster, he doesn't scout, but it's like he doesn't need to scout because he knows Dream's doing it again. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, that Dream would be doing the same exact thing every single game. I mean, he's got to know more openings, but, you know, maybe he's just very confident with it. It's a high-pressure situation. Uh, Trickster actually was supply blocked for quite some time on his second Ooh. stalker, so the pressure he wants to do, it looks like he's going to do one gate expand instead. The pressure he was going to want to put on with his two stalkers and the zealot is actually just not, his second stalker's not going to be there in time. But he is nope. going to put on a little bit of pressure with this first zealot and stalker, and the bunker is a finish, so he may kill some of these marines. Yeah, that does make the Zealot, you know, ten times stronger, basically. He's able to chase those Marines around, not take as much damage. Kills off a couple Marines, but he is going to lose the Zealot. And, and may uh, lose the STV if he's not careful here. I mean, not STV, yeah. uh, that's Soccer. Soccer, yeah. And oh. that Whoa. was pretty close. Imagine if there was a second Stalker there for all that. I know, yeah, that would have made a big difference. There's the Nexus for Trickster, so he will be expanding. One uh, one gate expand is pretty good uh, against the one racks expand. Basically, the only problem is, of course, you have to tech up very quickly or follow up with some aggression if you do a one gate expand. Otherwise, your opponent's just gonna be ahead of you. If you just kind of make some gateway units and sit back. Nope, SCV is gonna see everything yeah, it's or see enough anyway. Pop. Too difficult to stop those SCVs from getting over there when you have one of your stalkers out of place. Yeah, and one of those stalkers, man. He's just like. In a corner, cowering. He almost died. He was like, I don't want to go back to the Terran base. I wish there was high ground. I would just stand on that. Well, he's standing at the watchtower. That's okay. He's yeah. doing his job. It's a cool looking watchtower, too, on this map. Yeah, I like the watchtowers on this map. Yeah. They're probably made by Scantipedes. That's why they're so cool. Yeah, Scantipedes actually have a history of making Zelnaga watchtowers. That's right. The Scantipedes are actually the Zelnaga. Spoiler alert. Oh. Uh, I was trying to keep that as secret as long as possible, man. <laughs> I'm going to make a website called scantipedefacts.org. <laughs> How many legs does a scantipede have? Six, I believe. I think it's eight. I think so. Oh, Stalker. He's making a run for it again. He doesn't want to die. All right, we're going to find this out. Actually, oh, he has an on. indefinite number of legs. 
No, that's definitely eight with like two little like grabbing arms on the front. He's got four grabbing arms. Four. I think it's just indefinite, eight man. I don't think you can tell how many legs Scanapeats have. They keep it a secret from you. <laughs> I think it's pretty clear. I mean, he zoomed right in. <laughs> we saw it. Twilight Council coming up for Trickster, so will he decide to uh, go for some sort of blink timing, possibly? Will he go for quick Templar tech? A lot of different options to go out of that. What do you think, Protoss player? Well, I think these two units are going to do battle on the Watchtower. Then. <laughs> um, with that quick Twilight Council, he may add a Dark Shrine, but I don't think so. Just going to be getting charge ASAP here. Oh, another SCV. To oh, actually, scouting. on the production tab. Oh, it is a Dark Shrine. Ah, this is a okay. somewhat common follow-up to this build, the one gate expand. You get the quicker Twilight Council and go Dark Templar. Mm -hmm. It's very risky, though, and it's fallen out of popularity quite a bit. Obviously, Dream already has a turret up at the front of his base. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just so easy to detect but something like this. That's not what matters because there's hallucination on the way, and he's oh. not going to be going in the front of the base. Yeah. Dream, though, has depots on all sides of his base. He's going to see any pylon that's made close enough to warp in units, so it should be shut down if he's paying attention. Of course, it's pretty easy to see a pylon on the minimap, and he's going to see that pylon right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be much of a secret. And of course, Trickster can't see those depots, so he doesn't know. But Dream's just probably going to come over and take it out. Yeah, he's sending some Marauders right over to cancel that. Or kill it. One of the two, preferably kill, I suppose, if you're the Marauders. And it actually may not get cancelled here. Oh. Yeah, it is. Oh, he does cancel it. Just in time. And will he let the Dark Shrine finish? It looks like he's going to. He's going to let it finish. He wants to be able to use those DTs. He's already invested the gas in it. Yeah. Getting the gas back suddenly now wouldn't really help him. Well, it can keep Dream from moving out for a little while. You know, he either has to save up a lot of energy for scans, or he has to get a Raven if he wants to actually move out across the map. Yeah. So, there is that. And in fact, he's actually just not going to make any DTs right now. I really like that. Yeah. Adding two gateways. Charge is done. Oh, he did make two DTs. Now he's decided to make two DTs. Oh, one out by the Zelnaga Tower as well. He made some DTs after all. He's, we didn't see him. They were invisible. They were invisible, man. Yep. Four DTs total. I like... Dream is actually doing such a good job with scouting. He's been sending SCVs all over the map. He's got the factory floating around different areas. Factory's been found. Look at that. SCVs just can't... They can't be stopped, man. Wow. They're just going to scout bases. Uh. All right, that worked. Well, I guess in a way he scouted the DTs. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one way to do it. <laughs> yeah, actually, a little bit of a, a misstep, actually, by Trickster to let the DT yeah, kill it. And he actually immediately puts the turret up in his main, so that shuts down any possibility of DT drops. Yeah. Trickster's this dropship gonna... has been spotted, though, and <laughs> uh, it may be short-lived. Oh, no, he might lose it. Dropping units off in case the dropship does get taken out, and so will these units pretty quickly. This is like the series where things just don't work for each player, you know? They just try something, it doesn't work. Yeah, I would say so. Well, Archons are being made out of DTs now, back at the main base. He's got two Archons out. Probably Making a few more DTs, by the looks of it, wants to make more Archons and do a timing attack. Oh, yeah. And indeed, he does make two more Archons. And they catch a lot of Dream's units out in the middle of the map. I like Trickster's ability to pressure at the right moments in this game. You know, we saw him in the first game overextend just a little bit, but this game, I feel like he's just poking around the middle of the map, forcing stims, look at that, chasing him all the way home. He knows the timings where, hey, I have more units than you, I can actually pressure you right now. And if he attacks up this ramp, I'm gonna just take back everything I said, but I don't think he's gonna <laughs> attack up that ramp. Uh, hopefully he doesn't, I mean, He's in that position where he has the map control now. I mean, as long as he defends against shops like the ones that hit that... Oh, man, right I take oh, back everything I said, up. but actually that wasn't a full wall off, and these zealots are sneaking in, but look at this. All right. Even with these force fields, Trickster's army is going to be absolutely obliterated. Dropping the main as well, killing a lot of probes, and Trickster has to fall back. Ooh, yeah. things just not looking good. Except DT that one defending. DT cleans up everything in the drop. But, yep, uh, that helps. Trixel lost a lot of units there, attacking up a ramp, killing uh, almost a depot or two. <laughs> Supply's still fairly even for both players, and they are still on two bases right now anyway. Second command center, or third command center rather, for Dreamer is getting its orbital right now, so he's going to move out and take that. I'm actually a little bit surprised that we're not seeing Trickster try to take a third. You know, I mean, he's adding on... Templar Archives now, he just clearly wants to keep trying to pressure his opponent, but I feel like it's going to keep getting less and less effective at this point. 
Yeah, in fact, he's losing a lot of zealots. He had his units split into two groups. He may catch these these units out away from the oh. depots. He does catch some of them, but he's going back away now. He's it's like he doesn't want again. to, and he actually may break through here. Yeah, Archons can break down the force fields now, but again, he puts force fields in front of his units, so he can't use them. Uh, well, yeah, and he may break up in here. Looks oh, like he will, just barely having enough. Archons are going to kill quite a few SCVs. I see at the end those sentries. That's going to force Trickster back. SCVs killing Archons. What is the world coming to? I know it's a little bit weird when that happens. Yep. Well, he did break up the ramp, did a lot of damage. Right now, the worker count is 55 probes of 47 SCVs. And that stalker told that command center he does not belong. I guess so. I mean, that is, that's a good thing. I mean, he is denying the third there. So as long as both people are on two bases, I mean, there is there is kind of a balance to the game, I guess you could say. Yeah, but the balance is going to fall into the uh, the, fla the flavor the, the flavor. flavor of Trickster. It's going to be Trickster flavored flavor here. Flavor of Trickster. It's going to be Trickster flavored <laughs> here pretty soon because Trickster's going to have better tech. He's got... Templar Archives out, his Storm is finishing up, he's got a ton of Archons out, he's gonna have better upgrades. Right now the upgrades are actually better though for Dream, he's at 1-1 one, one, where his Trickster just has plus one armor. Yep. But as time goes on, Trickster can Chrono Boost out those upgrades, get more and more. Well, those Trickster flavored units make a delicious snack, you know? Yeah. Um, it's not part of your balanced breakfast. No, it's like the very top of the food pyramid. It's like where all the donuts and stuff are. You know, you don't need that. It's nice to have once in a while. Yeah, every once in a while. Yeah. Don't have too many servings. Do people even, like, really care about the food pyramid anymore? I mean... Well, I heard they adopted the new one, but I don't really know, you know, if that's actually true. I like this I green know. scout here. Dream just does a great job of scouting. It's one thing I really want to highlight about Dream. He's always very aware of his opponent's army, what it's made of where it is. Is it out of position? Because if it is, I'm just going to drop around the right side of the map, which is exactly what Dream is doing right now. You know, but they, there's still a DT to defend it. <laughs> you know they wanted to make a food pie chart for a while, but they thought it'd give people the wrong impression. I heard about that. I <laughs> uh, know. Yep. <laughs> well, here comes the drop in the main of Trickster. That is a very brave, but soon dead Marine. And yeah, the DT is going to take care of it. No problem at all. Well, he does decide to scan, or, yes, but problem. when you defend with DTs, one of the awesome things about it is if oh. you're forcing your opponent to scan every time he drops very you, it true. doesn't become very worth it. Yeah. Oh, oh nice storm on yeah, those units softening. Yeah, a lot of units being hit. That second storm is quite hit until he ran oh, through it. Wow. And then ran back into it. Ah, what's this going on? This is not a sprinkler. It's a storm, man. You don't run into those. Well, a lot of these units for Dream on very low hit points, but luckily he has each Marine pretty much has a personal medevac here with how many medevacs he's got yeah, out. So a medevac for every Marauder. <laughs> if he runs into it's like storms a political again, campaign. he keeps running into storms. I'm going to start calling Dream the Storm Chaser Terran. <laughs> <laughs> he may run into some storms right now. Oh, Doesn't yeah. see the Templar, and boom, oh. it's a ton of those units. And he doesn't run into it again, so that's good. EMPs and Storms hitting some units sometimes. Yeah, he's actually going to retreat here. Oh, Zealots in the third. Nice move by Trickster. That's going to reduce some mining time. The Sentry is getting caught by the concussive shells. Yeah, Trickster looks like he is really outplaying his opponent in this game, just being in more places than Dream is. Dream can't multitask yeah. as well. And look at this. Even though a lot of his oh. units just got EMPs, he's going to kill this entire army by the looks nice of storm. it. And I, I feel like... This is really where Trickster is starting to be stronger. I mean, obviously he's going to get away from this engagement, but I feel like he does better in a game where he sits back, harasses the expansions, and just kind of macros up himself. Well, when he engages know? on his terms, it's okay, but when yeah. he tries to engage at someone else's front, that's when he has trouble. Now, this oh, actually might not be this. the right time yeah. to engage. There's just too many bio units. He thought they were lower on hit points, but they're like I said, there's like a medevac for every yeah, Marine. Yeah, pretty much. And I mean, that's one way to get around the Templars. You just make a ton of medevacs because then, you know, if you feedback the medevacs, you don't have enough feedback to take out all of them. And if you storm, it just gets healed up quick. So that's actually not a bad response to seeing your opponent go for that Templar tech is just over make medevacs for a while. Yeah. And that could do some damage. It very well might. He's going to try to unpower some of these gateways. Go. And actually, Trickster has majority of his units already sent back to his main. He's sending some units over to the left side where there's another attack from Dream. If he can get some good storms off, he will be able to save the third Nexus, but it's going to be close. Yeah, that Nexus is starting to get pretty low. Uh, I he's think not it's gonna going to save down. it. 
Now he needs to catch all these units or he is going to be in a lot of trouble. But meanwhile, Trickster actually is doing some Dark Templar harass at huh. Dream's third base. And in the meantime, this drop's still doing damage at the main. Killed two gateways, killed a bunch of pylons. The army for Trickster finally coming in to clean that up. But did some decent damage, dude. Well, you guys didn't catch up, but there was a lot of Dark Templar harass at the uh, the third of Dream. Right now, the worker count is 63 probes to 40 SCVs. Obviously, about 23 to 30 of those probes are long distance mining right now. Mm -hmm. Actually, Trickster. even more because he's mined out completely of his main. Trickster is about 15th supply ahead or so. Remaking that third base. And Trickster needs to be aggressive here soon. He can't get caught by any more drop shenanigans. And he's actually sending part of his army in the wrong way. And even though he's ahead in supply, Dream has a much larger army. He's going to have to hit some really key storms to make this work. Yeah, absolutely. Another drop coming into the main of Trickster. Yeah, Dream is just being so on top of these drops. And Trickster, I think, even though his multitasking was shining earlier, he's starting to fall apart a little bit. His tempo are way too far away to engage with some of his army right there. He needs to pull back. Yep. He needs those Templar to engage this Jess Rider. He's going to lose this game. Well, he's just losing a couple Zealots here and there. I mean, that's yeah. going to make a bigger difference when the fight finally comes. The Templar again out of position. Whoa, EMP hits only one of the Templar. That was a close that call. That was a really close call. Wow. And the drop's still doing damage on oh, the natural no. Zealots warped in there. Look at that. And the Do Templar being Templar. targeted down. All of the Templar falling. Except one, and that one doesn't have enough for a storm. Be no. And he's going to need that storm because guess what's barreling down the front? Well, EMP on a lot of those zealots there, and Dream is looking pretty good. Storm on the ghost, though, so he's going to be able to be zoned out for a little bit, but things are looking rough for Trickster right now. EMP again, none of those he's units He's just have not fields. engaging with the majority of his units in most cases. Yeah, that's very true. Oh, time to go to the natural. The drones have been transferred. There's one DT there, but it gets taken down due to the scan very, very quickly. A lot of pylons getting nice taken Nice positioning by Dream behind these trees and on the high ground so the units can't surround. All the medevacs are, well, some of them are anyway. Need back. Taking out so many units. He's actually just going to lift up and drop on the low ground, I think, when the Zelts start to close the distance. I would love to see that, but more reinforcements are coming in here. Zelts are doing a decent amount of damage, but so many medevacs still have a good amount of energy that I think this is going to be about it for Trickster. Yeah, it's just going to be the end. You know, Trickster, I feel like, outplayed him until the end where he just made some bad engagements. Yeah, GG. GG. So that match, as MVP Dream advances to the round of 16, and Trickster is knocked out of the GSL. So many Codex players getting knocked down and knocked out the season. MC, Yun, Trickster, all going to have to try to requalify. It's going to be crazy qualifiers, man. Yeah. Well, Dream played that game like a chess game. He was always very aware of everything his opponent was doing with Marine Scouts. You guys saw play several times. The Marines stem forward, try to find what was going on. He always scanned. He was constantly aware he was doing drops. Yeah. And he was like, all right, so your knight is over here, so I'm sending my bishop over there. Yep. Kill the Nexus. So he was always just finding the weak spot and taking it, whereas Trickster was out macroing him a little bit, was yeah. winning the real normal engagements in the middle of the map. Until the end of the game where Trickster just lost his mind or something? I, like, well, he just, uh, he, I think he just got a little bit distracted. You know, he kind of fell apart. He had like a little clump of units here, a little clump of units here. His Templars are over here. You know, he had three Zealots here. And you, you just can't do that. You know, the Terran will just run around in their bio ball with their medivacs and just kill everything, you know? Well, you know, sometimes I think it might be good to turn auto cast charge off. Um, if you're not mm -hmm. going to babysit your zealots, because we saw several times one marine like running around like makes like eight zealots charge at that marine, and then ah, oh, that's true. And then that's like true. the zealots got a little too close to the regular army, so they all just died for no reason. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, trickster, you got to stop doing that, man. <laughs> you're losing a lot of army. Yeah. Now it's when you turn off the auto cast on charge, then uh, if you're engaging, do you just hit the hotkey for it and they you charge? You hit C and then click on the unit you'd like okay. to be charged at. Um, oh, I see. But. It's much better to have it on autocast if you're actually going to engage. Generally, it's impossible yeah. to like micro each individual zealot at different mm -hmm. units. It's not going to work. Well, that was a that series was a really good example of just the importance of unit positioning and engagements. Really, I mean that really showed what happens if you don't do that. You know, it showed good unit positioning versus bad unit positioning, and you know both of these guys guys kind of made mistakes, but. Yeah, good lesson for everybody out there. I'd yeah, say. definitely a good lesson for everyone. Yeah, um, you can see a lot of the state of of PVT right now, where people are finally starting to get Templar out off of two mm. bases and making that work. But at the same time, if you misengage, you can lose games. Yeah, it becomes like very that, fragile. Man. Yeah.
snap your fingers and you're like I can I can actually I actually can't snap my fi fingers I'm not good at it. I actually can teach you. 5 minute break. I'm going to learn how to snap my fingers. You guys come back and watch some GSL <laughs> here with Dylan Wolf. Don't go anywhere.